Hi everyone, today I'm going to be carrying on, I'm just going to put my light on actually, I think that's a bit better, with this um, lovely page from the uh, Miniature Enchanted Forest um, book. Now we've done the frog and uh, I think it's time to do the um, lily pad. Now I want to do the lily pad green but obviously the frog is green so I'm going to use some different greens for the lily pad. Now luckily with Ergosoft we have quite a few greens and I think, just thinking, I'll probably use these three which the number five, the number 52 and the number 50. I'm going to start off with the darkest which is the five and think about where I want the lily pad to be dark and I'm thinking about where the frog is sitting he's going to be casting a shadow um, here from his body I'm going to just taper that off a little bit and again across here and taper it off there and with his hands or whatever these are the hands? I don't think so and along here so I'm just basically marking out really um, where I think it's going to be darker um, underneath our little a snail and I'm going to mirror that over here now this is a symmetrical picture so oh, mirroring is wise I think I want a bit there and there it's not um, it either don't mirror anything or mirror everything I think is the best way I have seen some people who don't worry about the mirror image and just go with colours all over the place and once it's finished I think it can look it's nice and I think it's very daring okay I think that's it for the dark we'll probably darken it up again and I'm going to grab my 52 which is my next one and I'm going to think about how I'm going to shade this in and what highlights and I think this bit I think I might do lighter as if it's catching the light on the edge it's more likely to catch the light on the top, but the frog is blocking the top, you see. Now, I'm not going to do anything different on the top edge to, uh, although Johanna's drawn us some lines and things in, not that isn't part of my plan at the minute. I'm going to leave that bit because it's the sort of side. I'm just going to do the top. And I'm just doing lots of little circles to get some colour down here. And I'm going to try and keep it fairly even. As even as I can, anyway. Um, yeah, keep going. I was just thinking about how I very quiet then sorry I was thinking about how I've just bought my friend a um, copy of World of Flowers and how I hope she likes it I don't know if she she will not because there's anything wrong with the book I've colored over the poor snail's head but never mind um, not that there's anything wrong with the lovely book of course but ah that isn't the side that's the top but um, I don't know if she's into art and coloring at all but um, she's not having a good time of it so I just hope that she might pick it up and even if she just colours a few flowers it might just give her a little feeling of peace we'll see she's uh, going through a nasty time and uh, I've been meaning to send her something for a while and uh, this morning I saw a message from her on Facebook and thought this is it time to send something so we'll see and uh, I think well she can always pass it on hopefully if it's not her thing pass it on to somebody who it is but I did talk to other people about it and they said oh no might not like it just send flowers and I 
flowers just don't last, you know. So uh, I decided to go for the book, and other people may send her flowers anyway. So. We've got some nice flowers in this picture. So I've got to decide. Now with the dragonflies and the flowers, we could coordinate them and make them similar colours or completely different, you know. That's sort of our choice really. We could do pink flowers and purple dragonflies, that sort of thing. It's quite a scratch there, can you see? I don't know if you can see, it's probably not zoomed in enough. Right, so that's the main top and I am going to go over that with the lighter colour in a minute. But I'm just going to darken the edges of this. Now there is a bit of a bumpy thing going on here but I'm going to just darken it on the edges because I think it's, otherwise it's going to um, be too complex in this small paper, in this small picture keep it simple. Um, one in there, I don't know if you can see, I think you can just about see my great big hand in the way. And what I'm doing here is making it dark on the edge and light towards the middle so that I can now go in with my light green, the number 50, and blend it through. So I'm going to start where I started to fade the colour. Do quite a lot of hard colour here and then just reduce it as I get towards the middle. I find if I start at each end and then do a little bit each way, then it fades in the centre. So I did that quite quickly. So a bit here. So start about there. Quite hard pressure. Start to reduce. Go to the other side, less pressure, and there's just a light bit there. Now I'm going to go over the whole of the top of this leaf with this lighter green as well, just to blend it in, darken it up, bring all the colours together. And then if we feel that we need some, oh, we need to do this too, in the same way that we did the other bit. So more, I'm actually covering over the green there because it wasn't very well coloured and lighter. Gosh, that's a big vehicle just going by. Sounds like a lorry. Don't get lorries down our road. Only if they're delivering. We're in a, a cul-de-sac or a notary road. So we don't get many big vehicles. Lots of cars. But it has been quieter lately with people working from home. My husband's only been into work one day this week. Well, two half days. The rest of the time he's been at home. Which has been rather nice, but meant that I didn't have the opportunity to make many videos. So I'm making up for it this afternoon. So I finish my work for the day, which is rather nice. In fact, my customer hasn't got a lot of work for me for a while. So uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to... Uh, have a bit of a chill, make more videos and uh, just enjoy my colouring really. So as you can see I'm just going over with a layer all over to, uh, I find that the more layers of colour you put on the less white paper you see which can give a nicer effect depending on what you're looking for and it also gives a better depth of colour and I like a light, this light green sort of adds a bright touch to everything let's try not to colour over Mr Snail's head again this time poor thing now I'm going to have a look at the shadows that I put in and see whether they need emphasising and the answer is most definitely yes so I'm grabbing my number five now I need to think here, do I want the shadow to be really dark or do I want it blended in a bit? And I think I want it to be really dark here. So I'm just pressing hard. Get some shadow there. So I'm just 
going back over all those areas where I put shadow in before just to emphasize them again I can't really remember what I did here it's covered over probably that You don't want it to the shadow to look too big because it'll look like the um, frogs hovering off the top of the lily pad, which could be an interesting effect. But it's not what I'm going for. Uh, levitating frog mm. could be interesting, couldn't it? There we go. Okay, so we're going to do Mr. Snail. And I'm trying to think what colour to do him. I might do him the brown that we used earlier for the um, for the this these dark areas, and do the shell that colour. Now I'm doing a little gentle colour all round, and then I'm gonna add a few dark bits in areas that looks a bit more three dimensional. Um, um, I attempted to recolour this bit because it looks a bit scruffy. That was on the last video. I think I didn't have my lamp on then so I couldn't see how scruffy it looked. <laughs> right, and we have to think about Snail's body. Now, I usually do them... Ooh, that's the end of my pencil. Did you hear it? I wonder where that went. It just flicked across the room. <laughs> so the, I think I'm going to do them dark grey. It's what I usually do. I usually think that's the colour they are. So number eight. And also we need to cover the fact that he's got a green face. That's it. Let's cover that over. Now with this shell, because it's shiny, you could put a little bit of gel pen on there. But... Uh, I thought maybe not. So that's that. Now I need to think about the flowers. Now I think for simplicity I'm going to do all the flowers the same colour and I think orange with yellow middles is going to work really well because it will come it tone in with this brown. So I'm going to grab an orange. I'm going to grab number four and I'm just going to start with this middle flower and I'm going to start with a harder layer of colour here and just fade it towards the tip. I was thinking about doing a lighter colour on the tip but I think I'll just fade this one up. I think that works okay. A bit in there as well. Oh, not there. So it's quite a simple technique this. I don't know whether that should really be white or whether that's part of the flower. So it takes a bit of practice though to get it even. And then go back over that bit a little bit. Now with flowers, it doesn't matter if you have some sort of lines on the petals, because some flowers have that. Now do I do, I don't think I'm going to do all the flowers the same shade of orange, so I'm going to grab a different shade. I might zoom in a bit for you. these. So I'm going to grab a darker shade, number 24. I'm going to do these two the same. So I'm going to sneeze as well. That'll be exciting in a minute. <laughs> so darker here and then lighter towards the tip. Now with the petal you can go in this direction because that looks natural if you've got any lines that show. But uh, I find it easier with the angle I'm colouring at to do it like this. Now remember to take the time to sort of go back over the areas that you want to definitely be dark. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing harder here and as I go along the leaf I'm just gently lifting the pencil, the pre reducing the pressure on the pencil sort of lifting it so it's not pushing down on the page so hard so and it's a technique that needs to be practiced I think and 
and less. Now I think for the purposes of this video I will not colour both sides of the flowers. I will just do the one side or else it's going to be very boring watching me do the same thing twice and I will colour the other side in between videos you can see so that would be that colour so do that exactly the same and then move on Oops, just move my book across a little bit to these oh no we can't see them all too zoomed in so I'm going to go for the lighter orange which is the number 42 for this one here and I'm going to use exactly the same technique for every flower and I think that helps it look um, more consistent now this flower's got a line drawn around the edge of it I'm just going to pretend it's the end of the petal and colour it in that way you could colour it round with a darker shade of orange if you wanted to as if there was some sort of more petals underneath or something but I'm not I, I like it when it's sort of incorporated into the petals it's very it's a, per, it's a matter of personal choice gosh I can hear someone outside with a hmm, hedge cutter lawnmower, leaf blower something like that so you can see it's the same technique right through now because we're going to stick to a limited those three colours I need to think about where I'm going to put them with regards to the other flowers now I'm thinking this flower here looks like that one so I'm going to do it the same colour so it is to remind you number four so I'm going to do this with the four as well and that bit so it's the same technique now I don't know if there's a petal in there or not but I think it would look better if there is so I'm going to pop one in because there's because they're evenly spread through this flower so I think if there was one missing it would look odd now next this one because we're doing I'm actually going to jump ahead and do this one with this dark colour because I've decided that I'm doing it that colour and then I can see what's going to work after that really because I don't want to have colours in too close a cluster although we might end up with some of the same colour next to each other um, I want to space it out a little bit it's tricky because you want it to look natural but you want it to look um, not too odd <laughs> sort of random as well so it can be hard now the middles of the flowers I'm thinking about the colours while I'm doing this as well now I'm not sure um, could do I quite like the idea of doing them yellow just because it's so nice and vibrant okay that's a bit dark on the tip so we've done that there I don't want any of those this color so I can pop that one away now this color I don't want that one the same color so I'm going to do this one this color which is the number four so actually it's worked out quite well so this is number four got to try and work out what's going on around here bit there, bit there, bit there and bit there Ooh. oh I didn't sneeze in the end did I? I just had a little tickle, it's gone away now see how that's quite dark so that one needs to be quite dark too so I'm still trying to use the same technique of lightening up towards the end of the petals and I'm ignoring this double line like I did on that other one as well
I could colour the other side, film it and do a quick time lapse but I don't think that's necessary. Um, what you could do is watch the video through. Um, if you're colouring along, um, do the one and pause it and do the other. This is such a simple technique, you won't really need to re-watch what I've done because it's really easy and they're all the same. So just darker here and lighter here. So I think you could just stop the video and have a little go and catch up. So there we are and that one, can you see that one? Let's pull it down a little bit for you. So it's all very much the same. Keeping an eye on the time this afternoon as well because the children will be home from school. Not quite yet. Hopefully I'll be able to get this series of videos done before they come in. It's their last day at school today before they do their mocks. Their mocks have been delayed. They were supposed to be in um, January. They were going to have them in December. They decided this year to delay them until January to give the children a bit more revision time. I'm going to do the centres all the same with one yellow pencil, number one. Now I have got videos on how to do flower centres in lots of interesting and different type ways but with these I want them to all be consistent I want them to be vibrant and I just think yellow will work so yes so their mocks were delayed from December to January and then of course schools were closed so they've been preparing for them since then and now it's March so I'm hoping they're just all ready and that they'll do okay so there we are. I'm going to leave that there. I'm just going to zoom out a little. No out a little. One day I'll work out which controller is which. Now, so that side needs to just be identical to this side. So this should be fairly straightforward to colour. I'm going to have a go at that um, before I take the photo for the still at the end of this video. So you'll be able to see how it looks when it's done. And uh, I will be back um, with the third part to do the um, dragonflies. So uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and happy colouring. <laughs>